Through the two-week non-conference schedule, the OK Blue appears to be deep again. At least seven teams have shown signs of being pretty good. West Catholic won the league title a year ago, sharing it with Fruitport. The Falcons opening divisional play tonight against another contender, Coopersville, in the game of the week. Broncos have played some close week three games at home the last couple years. Could it be three in a row tonight against the Falcons at Mearman Stadium? No doubt about it. But Westwood strike first. First quarter, Alec Wickstrom buying some time and finding Cole Bauer. 33 yards. Falcons take a 7-0 lead. Cooper responds on the ensuing drive. It's Bo Harris up to Luke Stanton. I hope my college coaching friends take a look at number five in green. Dude can go get the ball. Second quarter, Broncos establishing the ground game. Isaac Lemieux takes it from five yards out. 14-7, Broncos with the lead at the half. Late third quarter, West doing some running the ball of their own. Charlie DeBruin goes in from six yards out. 14 all after 36 minutes. West would get the ball at its own 18-yard line with 4.45 left. Third and 14 near midfield, Wickstrom to Ryer Snow, 17 yards, moves the chains, would eventually set up sophomore Landon Smith from 27 yards out on the final play of the game. West Catholic walks off with a 17-14 win in an incredible football game. The Falcons run for 322 yards in this game, 276 and a touchdown from DeBrune Wickstrom. Completed 10 of 12 passes for 138 yards and a score. Stanton a big day on both sides of the ball, 65 yards and a score receiving. Also intercepted a pass, recovered a fumble on defense. Isaac Lemieux ran 20 times for 113 yards for Coopersville. And we bring in Brett Bakita, who called this game on 96.1. The game had to be a joy to call this one. This is as good as it gets. Oh, man, you had great coaching. Landon Grove, Ed Kamen, tapped their, uh, tipped their hats to them. The kids were ready. They were prepared. You saw X's and O's going on. They had to change things up a little bit. Early on, West Catholic takes Nick Gordon, the speedster, out of the game, really, for Coopersville. Where they had to go to different people. Bo Harris stepped up. Alec Wickstrom stepped up. But... Charlie De Bruin. I mean, what can you say about this kid? 34 carries in a high school football game, 276 yards and a score, and he plays defense. Other people are cramping, leaving the game. He had eight tackles defensively. He really did it all, and I thought that Coopersville got a great performance from that guy, number five you talked about. Not only is a wide receiver highballing it with a couple of great catches, he came up with two great defensive plays, an INT and a fumble recovery that I thought kept Coopersville in this game. Yeah, Coopersville wins a turnover battle. They forced three turnovers in this game, but De Bruyne kind of put the team on his back. There's the fumble on the goal line going in, and Coopersville able to recover the football there. But big game. It all ultimately came down to the leg of a sophomore. He's a soccer player. His dad's the head coach of the soccer team. It's his first ever field goal attempt in high school, and Landon Smith drilled it. About six minutes left, I was talking with one of my teammates, and he, we, were just, we just looked at each other, and we both knew it was... I think we knew it, it was going to go come down to that. So you're standing out there, last play of the game. You know you got a chance to win it. What's going through your mind? Don't miss the kick. <laughs> oh, it took everything. That was a great program. I mean, we came in knowing that, but when we got out here, they were physical to the attack every single play. It took everything in us. You know, that's a great coach team, some great players, but we just came out with the win because we got the heart, you know, all the morning, 6 a.m., you know, it built something that's, that's different from every team. We just got that dog in us. It shows where we've grown. Um, I told our kids, like, at halftime, like, hey, we had a very similar experience to this last year, week seven at Fruit Park. I'm like, let's use, let's, let's show that we've learned from that. I was like, what a great opportunity to show we have grown emotionally to be able to bounce back in a really hostile environment against a really, really good football team. Um, so I think it shows a lot of uh, maturity and growth amongst our program, which is, you know, I'm so proud of them. It's one of the most proudest moments of my coaching career as far as finding a way to win a game when things weren't really going our way at all.